What the hell is that? Hey, what do you have, boys? My name is Troy, and welcome back to Facility D20, where we're always making cool stuff. I got a bit of a confession to make. I really wish I did more 3D design, drafting, and sculpting. It's something I just don't spend enough time at, but I'm going to change that in this video. And I don't want to make just any old random thing. I kind of want to make something useful. I got a bunch of tanks. They're all scrapped and half garbage, so I figured, hey, if I'm going to do this, I might as well try to do something that I can use and maybe even share with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to design some tanks. I'm going to grab my computer and let's get at it. We're just going to jump in here when I already had the tank body inside the panels pretty much completed. Here I'm adding a cube to make the turret. And basically I just did simple things for this whole tank like scale down faces. Here I'm adding a loop cut and a slide. Just grabbing a face and scaling it down to add some geometry to it. Here you can see I just extrude it up a little bit, scale it down. Um, then I decided to try a mirror modifier. So I just deleted half of my face here, added a mirror modifier in the right direction. And now everything that I would do on one side, I would pretty much reciprocate on the other side. So here I just subdivided some faces, pulled them out, extruded them, grabbed some more, inset them, and scaled them down a little bit. And I just kept working at this this way. Here I made a little block. This was going to be the front part of the cannon, and I just wanted to grab it, push it into the turret piece, use a boolean modifier to subtract it. Usually this makes a face here, but whatever reason it didn't, so I had to reface it. And then I ended up with this weird thing in the middle here. Don't really know why that happened, so I deleted that. If I go into wireframe mode, you can see that this piece will fit inside, but I like to scale this down a little bit. So I scaled it down 2% so that when it prints, it could slide in there pretty easily. Here's the side sponsons of this tank. I just added a cylinder and now I'm going to go ahead and create the cannons. So this is pretty simple. I just kind of moved this in place and grabbed it and started to extrude it a little bit. Scale the faces up and down and just continue all the way up this shaft until I have what looked like a gun barrel. When I come around the front here, I just inset the face and extrude it inward again. Duplicated the object, moved it down, and just kind of made two little guns. I wanted to put like a connection piece in the middle, so I grabbed another cube and just scaled it around until it, you know, fit aesthetically, moved it into place, and just did the same thing, extruding and scaling to make some shapes. Then I was pretty happy with that, so I added a cylinder. My plan was to connect these side sponsons to the tank using a cylinder and a boolean modifier to make a little hole inside of the tank. So I just lined this thing up about center and uh, put a little hole inside of the tank and that's where these things is going to fit. Next I measured up the tank because I didn't do this thing to scale. So this tank is about 120 millimeters long and it's about 80 millimeters wide and it's sitting at about 50 millimeters high. So I grabbed a cube, punched those dimensions in, and now you can see how tiny my tanks really were compared to that. But it's no big deal, I just grabbed them and scaled them up. Just scaled them up by eye until they pretty much matched about the size of that rhino. Make sure the height was pretty much the same, and then I was really happy with that. So I had these magnets lying around, they're at 6 millimeters. And my plan was to put a little hole in the tank body in the turret so I can attach these magnets, and I just did this with a bullion mount bar. Now, guys, here are the tracks all done. I tried to record this, but it just took me like three hours because I didn't really know what I was doing. So here's the end product of this tank. All these STL files were exported and I pretty much got ready to slice them up using my FDM slicer and my resin slicer. So guys, if you're interested in this STL, I do have a Patreon. I'm going to have it up there. If you want to support the channel or get exclusive videos or participate in polls, check it out. We're having a lot of fun over there. I'll link it at the end of the video. Then began this slicing process. I pretty much sliced up everything before I started. Here you can see my FDM print. I threw everything on the bed. 
This was going to run me about 21 hours and cost just less than $5. Here's the resin print all hollowed and supported. This was going to run about 11 hours and cost about $4.74. I'm going to use a standard gray resin from Igloo Mars and some neat filament from 3D Printing Canada. And now, just like this little scene here is out of focus, I was about to prepare for a rough time trying to prototype these parts. But I loaded up the printers, hit print on them both, and sat back and watched them to see what would happen. The facility was in full production that day, I can tell you. Guys, we hit 5k subscribers. The last couple of weeks has been insane. If you want to join this channel, I love chatting to you guys in the comments. Smash that subscribe button and join this little community. It looks like the resin print's pretty good, but we have an absolute major fail on the FDM. I actually have no idea what happened here with this one. But it's pretty bad. I gotta try to get all this crap off now. Wow, it's really bad. It's all over the heatsink. This was such a pain in the ass. Can you guys go ahead and smash that like button to make me feel a little bit better? But no, really, hitting that like button really helps videos like this out and little channels. I appreciate it. So I'm having a problem with it. It's not starting, so I'm going to go ahead and run the recalibration sequence to see if I can get this thing going again. And here I found something super odd. What the hell is that? So you can see here when I slice this main body, just below the tank, there's this white line that's running up with the supports, but it doesn't show anything when the file begins to manifest in front of the screen here. It's some sort of weird ass artifact that actually printed. You can see here I had to snap it off and it merged right into the tank. But I figured I was gonna clean it and use it anyway. That's alcohol I'm using this time. And my drain holes were not big enough. You can see here that they pretty much just clogged up with uncured resin. It all started to flow out once I punched the holes in it. But you know what? I was still able to save this piece. I just cut that off, cleaned it up a bit, and hey, I did have a tank body. It's sort of loud here now because I got the exhaust fan going. I got these two printers going, but I had to update the firmware. I had to re-slice the file. I had to recalibrate everything. It took me like a couple hours, so I'm about to hit print again on it for the second time. Hopefully this time it works. Before we do that, we're gonna ask some herbal essences because buddy, she's worth it. So this is just gonna help this print stick to the bed a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and hit print. This time I used the Perusa slicer because I had to use Perusa slicer to update the firmware, so. And I'm just gonna keep an eye on this first layer here and see how it's laying down. It looks like it's laying down good here. It looks a little high here. And it looks good here. So my bed might be a little bit off level this way, but it's not gonna be enough to really hurt the print, I don't think. I think I'm gonna adjust my Z a little bit. So after I moved my Z down a little bit, I started to lay down some really nice lines and I was happy with that. Then it was back to slicing. These are the sides and tracks here. You can see that I hollowed the model. And when you hollow a model, it's important to put holes in it again. And this time I doubled the size of my holes to make sure they would drain. And I just tried to hide them away up and under the track here. And I added a whole bunch of them. Then I just hit auto supports and went for the best. Now these things aren't like ideally placed, but Luchis does a good job with auto supports. The prints don't usually fail, so I figured I'd give it a chance. I did grab a couple of them and change them to heavies just so I could really anchor that print down. Once that was done, I duplicated it and then I just simply mirrored it in the Y direction and boom, just like that, two sides of the tank. This one was gonna run me about three bucks in about 11 hours. Halfway through, I did top the print up because it was starting to run out of resin and I checked my FDM and I had a little bit of problem with the guns, but that print was going well too. Then they were done, nice and clean and pretty much perfect. Because these were so nice, I decided to use some hot water to help me remove the supports and just started to clean them up. Some of these in between the tracks were hard to get out, but I managed to get them. Just watch closely here for a second, guys. Check this out. 
You hear that? Let's play it again. Mm. Yep, that wasn't good. I bumped this with my elbow. So, 12 hours in, and I bumped this with my elbow. The FDM do not want to cooperate with me. Not a bit. Anyways, things started to go well from this point forward. It was kind of a blessing in disguise because Perusa Slicer sucks with supports. I would have never got this track apart, and I discovered that I didn't even print any wheels inside this track. So there was something weird going on. I threw it in Ultimaker Cura, my favorite slicer, and sure enough, you can see here that whatever reason, some of those wheels just wasn't going to print. I threw it in STL Online Repair Tool, and just like that, man, I fixed that file, and now you can see on the bottom one, the wheels are printing, but up top, some of those wheels are not printing. So I used the new files and sliced those up in Cura. Threw the rest of the pieces in Luchis for the resin printer, sliced those up. Finally, we got this one printing super nice. I'm really happy with this. This one's looking good. This one over here, these guns and turrets, got a little bit of problems with it. I just had a quick look, some support failures. So we got the main turret and the gun looks pretty good. One of the side sponsons came out nicely. These two little sensors that I made here to plug the holes if you didn't want these guns on came in okay, but it looks like we're missing the little guns. And again, this one failed. So I've definitely got some stuff stuck on the FEP I'm gonna have to deal with, but no big deal. I'm just gonna pop these two off. These prints are good. Fix up these things here and reprint those couple and then all these prints should be proven for the resin. And then I'm probably gonna run off another tank body to fix some of the issues there. To clean the FEP, I just like to hit it with a little bit of alcohol. Take my glove off so that I don't get resin on the back side of the screen and just use my finger to massage it and pop it off. Then I made sure my printer was still sitting level, which it was. Refilled the vat and got ready to print off those pieces that failed. This time with the new side pieces using Ultimaker Cura, my supports were actually not too bad. It was still difficult around this track area. You can see I ended up popping out a couple of pieces of track that I had to glue back in, but it all printed. And like that, my side sponsons and guns printed, so I washed and cured those. Put on the main body, and that thing was printing absolutely beautifully. And you can see here how much easier the supports started to come off. It was just nice and clean and satisfying. FDM body looking good. That's it, we're finally finished the printing. We got this resin print came out perfect this time. The turret and the cannon over here came out really nice. We had a little bit of problem with these small side guns. Uh, the print speed was just too fast, so I'm just gonna print these little ones by itself. And that's all the prototyping. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble it now, see what they look like compared to each other. So you can see the new tank body here. I made a little bigger holes and it printed out perfectly fine. I did damage it a bit when I was taking supports off, but other than that, look nice. Again, the FDM body looking real good. You can see the side pieces here had uh, the bottoms weren't that great, but I printed it in two different orientations and I figured I'd leave the bottom ones roughed up a bit. They were the better print. And then the side sponsons for the resin, I printed two types, one had hollowed and one never. The cannons were looking super clean on both prints. The turrets on both prints were looking good. Obviously the resin is better, but the FDM prints look really nice too. The resin prints really shine here on the tracks. You can see here I had to fix a couple of tracks there, but uh, overall that was pretty good too. You can see them compared side by side here. And then it was time to assemble them. These fit together nicely. Both the resin and the FDM went together pretty much super smoothly. Now, when I scaled it down 2%, I don't think it was quite enough. I had to kind of scrape a little bit of resin down to make it push fit in here. So next time I think I'm gonna do 4%. But at least now I can swap out the guns if I ever wanted to make new ones. Same with the FDM, it was a little bit tight, so I just had to cut a little bit off the edges here and make it fit inside the turret.
Then to see if my magnets fit, and sure enough, the magnets fit perfectly into the holes. So that was a fairly accurate Boolean modifier that I did. I had to clean out a little bit of resin here on the inside of the turret, but it was no big deal and that magnet fit nicely. Now for some reason the FDM hole didn't print, so I had to drill a off-center hole here right quick. Then the side sponsons were just push fit into place and these two tanks were lined up looking at each other pretty good. So guys, these tanks came out really nicely. I'm super happy with them. I've actually printed another resin tank since this video and it came out with no issues, perfectly fine. Of course, the resin one is a little crisper and cleaner, but I can't knock that FDM print. It came off really nicely. And from tabletop height, man, you can't really tell the difference once you get a bit of paint on these things. So guys, make sure to smash that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Check out some other videos on my channel. I got them linked right here.